Hey, a little different video for you guys today. We're gonna get out of the shop and take you to do a Santa Maria style barbecue. We've been doing this for several years. Started with my father-in-law, learned the process from him and kind of adapted it to my own liking. But we'll show you what we do and how to cook Santa Maria style tri-tip and chicken like a pro. try to get a fire to start especially if it's cold maybe a little damp so I use match light charcoal just a regular old bag I just rip the bag open set it out in the middle of your grill grab you some of your wood and then just make you a little Boy Scout TV we didn't get anything fancy we got the bundles of wood you can get at your grocery store but we do get the oak bundles. Oak just makes all the difference in the world. I've done it with mesquite. Mesquite works all right. If you can get it, oak has the perfect flavor for what we're gonna do here. We'll light this guy off, get it roaring, and then we'll get a couple chunks of fat from our trim, from our tri-tip. And when the grill's hot, we'll use that fat to clean the grill. We'll show you that in just a second. We are 6.40 a.m. and we have fire going already. Plan is to be serving meals, tri-tip and chicken at 11 a.m. So here we go. I'm gonna put some edges back on our knives. Get things cleaned up a bit. It's been a day or two since we did a barbecue. So. I don't really use this set unless we're doing big barbecue. This is a set when I ran the barbecue crew for our local high school. Shannon bought me this set and this was my go-to set for that guy. We did a lot of barbecues. We used to do 450 or so pounds at night on a big football game. So if you guys aren't familiar with this, this is referred to as Santa Maria style tri-tip. Cut of meat originated in Santa Maria, California. It's the middle right out of a sirloin. It's a little hard to find outside of our area, but an excellent piece of meat. We chose to go with Angus beef. I think it's a little bit better. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna reach in and we're gonna separate this top fat. I want all of this fat because I need to clean my grill with it. So this one I'm going to cut way down and we're going to get these chunks. I want to make sure you get this big thick hard. I don't know whether you can hear. Let's see if we can get this. That's that's hard like that plastic. I need to get that off. It's not good for anything. Nobody wants to eat that nasty stuff. Now you don't want to take all your fat off because your fat, if you're going to do meals like we are, Fat's gonna give you some flavor. It's gonna help keep your meat moist. But here's what we do with this fat. We literally throw it up there on our grill. And we're just gonna take a couple of these right now. We're not gonna worry about trimming them all down to finish. We're just getting this fat off because we have to get that grill clean so we can get our chicken started. Believe it or not, our chicken will be the first thing that goes on and the first thing that comes off way before we're ready to do any cutting and serving. We build these. We go to yard sales and get cheap old uh, golf clubs. I bend these, grind these to a point, bend the little hooks, cut the end of the golf club off and we use silver solder. And we silver solder the hooks right in the end and use these guys. as your meat turners. All right, so as you can see, we got a pretty good ripping fire going. So I'm just gonna take this guy and I'm gonna knock it down a little bit. What we're doing is we're starting to 
open up the size of our fire. We're going to need this whole pit to have a fairly decent coal bed in it. So now that I got this guy going, I have some of these old pieces of wood that we picked up from the house that are bigger chunks. And these guys will make, we call them backlogs. I don't know what you guys call them, but those guys will make a log that'll burn for a long time. We'll get those in there and get those good and started. Let's see if you can hear this. You can hear that fat that we have up there starting to sizzle. Temp's coming up good. We're just a short bit of time away from starting to put chickens on. Secret ingredient. So we're just going to melt this butter down. This butter is going to be a basting agent with some other goodies we're going to put in it. It'll be a basting agent for all of our meat today. We're going to do chickens and we're going to do the tri-tip that you saw us cut some pieces off chicken chicken tri-tip there's 40 chicken halves that we're going to cook today there's 80 pounds of tri-tip that we're going to do today the sausage is for us snacks that's how he pays me Barbecue snack. So this is just dried parsley flakes. Sweet cream salted butter. This is chopped garlic. You can use chopped garlic. You can use minced garlic. So we're going to get a little garlic in here. Doesn't take much. Garlic goes a long ways. And this is... Susie Q seasonings. We just put a little of that in there to give the butter a little extra. All right, so we're gonna get some chickens going. I'm gonna drop the grill down so I don't have to throw quite as high. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Susie Q seasoning we're going to season the cavity side or the rib side of the chickens and we're going to throw them on, believe it or not, we're going to throw them on skin side down. What we're going to do is we're going to look for this nice golden color that's going to come up on them. The skin's going to crisp up because this is so stinking hot right now. It's just going to sear these things off and they will be money whenever we're done. That'll get us right on here, and we'll get to throwing chickens. Things are fixing to get real. I'm gonna get the crap burn out me here in a minute. All right, so heavy beer. If you use light beer, it tastes horrible. But heavy beer, and no, you don't drink it. You pour it in with your butter. And that was about, oh, half or so of that. Just look at your pot, about that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna baptize our chickens. This is where things get nasty. Cause this is hot, hot, hot. And all that splash that's going out there starts turning you red. But right now we're, we're just warm enough. You don't really want to hold your hand over there a long time. But if you look at our chickens, 
we're not getting black burnt we're just getting that nice sizzle starting to golden up <clears throat> we're gonna let our skin go probably a little longer than you would think almost not charred we don't want it black but we're gonna go until our skins have a nice 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 gold look to them all right so we're starting to get there that's because we were hot in the beginning and these ones were the first ones on but those chickens are beautiful these ones down here haven't been on as long they're just a little bit on the on the lighter side got blonde chickens down here and brunette chickens in the middle and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in now and we're gonna just gonna move our chickens just a little bit the only reason we're moving them is because when you first put them on they have a tendency to stick to the grill no matter how much we worked with that that fat at the beginning we get a little bit of stick we're just gonna go through the whole thing just like this oh, we got some good looking birds all I'm doing right there is this one, whether you guys can see it or not, it was a little on the darker side. And I had some down here that were really blonde. Yeah, just manage your grill a little bit. It's not a set it and forget it type cooking. Dead soldier. This wheel gets hot. Okay, <laughs> see? You're toasty in a hurry. So those guys are good for a bit. Let's get back on to trimming some tri-tips. You see this stuff here? It looks like paper. This has to come off. This is just a chewy, nasty mess. So we'll get in here and we'll trim all of that off and any of the super thick bark. There's no sense to just cook it it's just going to turn into chewy yuck. So get a piece of fat like that off of there and just throw it away. This here, leave the meat. It's just thick. It's more of that hard stuff that we talked about before. We just get rid of that. This is the side that you really have to work on. So this is a side that's the separator in the muscle. And you can see, see this stuff right here? It's kind of a blue white color. This is, we call it sinew. It's a separator, but if you just get your knife and slide it right up underneath there, you can get that guy to cut right out of there. So you're just going to pull that off of there, go through and look. You'll see it, it's under this piece here too. So we just get real close to the top. Oh, there's a good spot of it right there. You can see that. That is gristle. That is hard, it makes your meat chewy. You do this for a customer and they get, get that stuff. I mean, you can't, you can't poke a hole in it. And that is just horrible. You get that in your, your piece of meat. That's like chewing on a rubber band. Let's see about turning some chickens over. That is a pretty chicken. <laughs> that guy's on the hot side right there. You end up moving him. First couple times you do this on an open pit, you're a little bit afraid that that's gonna be charry. It is not. When we take you through the secret procedure you're gonna see that that's gonna just turn into this absolute decadent skin decadent that's a big word for us isn't it <laughs> Woo, has a butter butter pocket oh yeah it he got warm in a hurry that's for sure okay but that cool for just a second and then we'll get back on it with that butter sauce again so this part right here the base after the flip helps the skin just get that soft it'll be crispy 
but it won't be it won't have that burnt nastiness it'll just get this soft fall apart taste that you can't get any other way i've tried it a bunch of different ways and every time no matter what you do the skin ends up this charry chunky stuff without it or it ends up this gummy mess you don't want to eat i would love to find a way not to have to burn the crap out of my arms by putting this on there but i haven't found it yet and i figure if it ain't broke don't fix it all right so i'll show you what we use here see how this meat is just starting to split at the breast as soon as that meat splits from the breast that tells you that you're at a point where you can get these guys off and get them in the ice chest you can see this ice chest here we've started pulling stuff already and we're gonna get these guys good and hot and get them in the ice chest and we will pour the secret concoction on them not really a secret it certainly won't be oh, look at that guy that guy was so done it popped right in a quarter my wife can take or leave most chicken but she absolutely loves this barbecue chicken like she'd probably be a little salty that we're cooking this today this is where the magic happens and we don't touch it again until we're ready to serve it yep. start again all right we're going to start seasoning tri-tip pappy's seasoning and our suzy q we've already dumped part of one in there just because we had it open and we're just going to make a mix and all we're going to do is we're going to roll our tri-tips in our seasoning i try to coat all my sides you can do it with sprinkles i've seen guys do it with the the blessing style then your excess just falls off because you're not mashing it down on there well we've got one more bag to trim but i want to start getting some stuff on because of the heat variance in your grill you're going to get some that cook faster than others we don't greatly care because we're going to pull them off and put them in a ice chest to finish but this will make our job a little easier because we'll be able to move things around and tend and get the cook temperature that we want so we're just going to take these and we're literally we're going to look for the fattiest side our fatty side is going to go down we'll get a nice tight grill you want to try not to overlap if you overlap sometimes you'll get a spot that doesn't cook right or it'll get this weird gray color and utilize your whole grill Oh, that one's big. What do you look for for your tri tip? So, right now, because we put them on fat side down, this fat can get almost charcoal y looking. And you really don't care because we're gonna baste this again. That butter and beer garlic will soak down into that little bark that we have on the outside and it will just turn to this buttery soft you won't get that crunchy burnt stuff that you get sometimes and that's the advantage of going fat side down you can cook it hot for a long time um, on this one this grill's a little little inconsistent the mi middle's a little hotter than i like so i've got a you can see we've got kind of a void in that midsection pulled everything to the outside we're listening i don't know whether you can hear this you hear that little sizzle that meat is cooking at a nice rate we've got plenty of time 
We're gonna let this slow cook. We'd like to be in the hour, hour and a half cook time for Santa Maria style pit uh, tri-tip. Any faster than that, it really makes the meat kind of tough. It cooks really quickly. You'll get a funky outside and a raw inside. You see the juices dripping out. That's the fat that's rendering off. This thing, this is gonna be awesome. here pulling the tri-tips off and getting them in the ice chest. We're pulling them off at about 124 degrees. We're doing this so that it, it's still on the rare side. It's going to finish off with heat from all of those tri-tips in there together. You can see as we open up this uh, ice chest, the steam actually coats the camera. This is helping us to finish off that meat and keep the juices in. We want to make sure that we give our tri-tips time to rest. If you were to pull your tri-tips off throw that meat right on the cutting board and cut it up, you're gonna get a lot of that juice that comes out. What you're losing is flavor and moisture out of that meat when you're cutting it. You'd like to have the meat rest for 30 to 45 minutes afterwards in a heated condition. So when you cut a tri-tip, you wanna cut cross grain. You should see little short strands like this. This is gonna be tender. This meat's gonna just fall apart. If you cut a tri-tip, and it looks like this, long strands. This is going to be like shoe leather. That's going to be horrible. So, cut cross grain. Tri-tip will also switch grain. So because of the piece of meat it is, right in here, it went from nice short grain to long grain. This stuff needs to be cut this way. So because of the group we're cooking for, they don't like red in their meat. So we're taking some of these steaks and putting them back on and cooking the red out of them. Some of you guys will agree. Some of you guys will be like us and freak out because all of the good is leaving the meat. You watch this, the grill people will be over here in like two minutes. I told you the grill people will be here like two minutes as soon as they know what you're doing. All right, so once your chicken's off, prior to serving, all you need to do is take your chicken, lift at the leg, slide your thumb into the leg joint between the leg and the breast, and push your fingers together. Your chicken should come apart that easy. When you break this guy, it should just be, you can see the moist, Same thing with your leg. Your leg should just pull apart. So what do you think it would take to make something like this on like maybe a little bit smaller scale so we could like use it around the house? I know we got rid of our old one. Yeah, well we do have that pressure tank that we have the, the reddish mm -hmm. brown colored one. Uh, the bigger of the two, I think we could probably cut up and make something very similar to this. We were trying to figure out what we were gonna do with it. So yeah, let's go ahead and make a Santa Maria style one out of that. And we have a smaller one as well. I'd like to make kind of a smoker style. And we can find something cool to do with that. Maybe something that will benefit somebody else as well. Hey, we know this isn't our normal video. Leave us a comment below and let us know if you like this type of stuff. We can get some more on for you. And we'll catch you on the next one.